I wish on stars that the Sandman will come and send me to sleep. People will go to great lengths for a few Z's. I am completely awake. What do you mean it's 5 a.m., damn you, Summer? Be it too early or late night, Julie Snyder also finds herself checking the clock. Come morning, she feels tired and impatient. I love to be able to sleep, go to bed, you know, 10, 30, 11, and wake up at 7. And I, I can't remember the last time that that's ever occurred. The problem occurs when people's minds start to race and they start to worry about things or anxieties come up. Studies show 40% of Canadians exhaust themselves with a sleep disorder at some point in their lives. Experts insist while eight hours of shut-eye is ideal, it's normal to wake up once or twice a night. The body's drive to sleep lowers as the night goes on and it doesn't help you to check the time. Looking at the clock uh, will, will make people feel anxious about not returning to sleep. That causes the body to release fight or flight hormones, which interfere with the sleep onset process. Next time you're up, doctors say if you're wide awake, don't stay in bed. Get up and do something quiet like reading or Sudoku. Don't turn on any screens, but if you must watch TV, wear sunglasses. It helps maintain your circadian system. Finally, doctors advise don't eat in the middle of the night and don't sleep in the next morning. Both will hurt your routine more than they'll help. Studies have linked chronic sleep loss to heart disease, weight gain, and an increased risk of type 2 diabetes. Repeatedly fragmented sleep can be associated with uh, uh, ongoing cognitive uh, difficulties and development of uh, dementia even. If you're losing a couple hours of sleep every night, you should talk to your doctor. Experts insist most people do not need sleeping pills. What doctors generally prescribe for late night wake-ups is talk therapy to deal with the underlying anxiety and to help you find a way to relax. Christine Burak, CBC News, Toronto.